Hello from Germany. My name's Shannon, and today we're going to take a look at a vintage 53-year-old Coleman Vagabond tent. So the story behind this tent, I picked it up uh, in Colorado about um, maybe five, six years ago. Um, got it pretty inexpensive. Uh, wasn't sure about it. There was no parts inventory. Didn't know how many poles. Didn't know how to set it up. Uh, didn't know if the tent was in good condition at all. But I picked it up because I'd always wanted a canvas tent. We typically use smaller tents to, st to stay warmer when we camp. Uh, but the kids wanted a bigger tent. Uh, I didn't mind having a, a bigger tent, especially a canvas tent. And so uh, on a whim, I picked it up. Hadn't opened it uh, really. I hadn't ever tried to set it up until this week. And we'll take a look at what we found this week. One of the things that's very important about all of this is that it was really difficult to find a lot of information about this tent. It was difficult to find uh, better instructions, any videos about it, how many uh, poles were needed. Um, just as an example, when I looked at the part sheet, I appeared to have all the poles. But when I looked at the poles, there had clearly been some modifications done to them. And so I really questioned what was going on with the poles. And so setting it up this week, uh, we discovered a few things and I'll take you through what uh, we discovered. So here's the tent. It's actually quite a nice tent. Uh, you know, once I had set it up, I really realized that it, it taking that chance was a, was a good move. It, it turns out that it's in really good condition for a 53-year-old year old vintage tent. Uh, what I found about it, uh, really quick, I'll tell you up front, is that it was missing the ridge pole. And so I borrowed a piece of lumber from the, I borrowed a piece of lumber from the neighbor. And uh, while that's not the final product, it's been erected now for almost a week. We've been using it as a background in a YouTube studio while the kids are making their YouTube videos uh, for their quarantine editions of uh, outdoor videos and that sort of thing. So it has been set up for quite a while. What I would tell you about this ridge pole is that's about nine feet long. Uh, remember, we're in Europe, so things are measured in meters. I would, I would use a 10-foot uh, ridge pole. I also would continue using wood, uh, uh, I have wood, W-O-U-L-D, continue using wood for that ridge pole. I really like that. I mean, it's kind of a throwback to the general purpose tents of the army. It's um, not that heavy. That's about an inch and a half. So it needs to be inch and a half by inch and a half hexagon probably. I don't know much about that, but I know that the army's ridge poles were made as in a, in a hexagon shape. And so I did the same thing. Seems to be working pretty well, but it needs to be about 10 feet long. Um, one of the, so these are, these eave poles, these are originals. Okay, so you would need four of these eave poles if you were to construct or find a Coleman tent. They're really, they're recognizable. They probably come together, but they can be separated right here at this joint. That's a nice little twist lock joint. If you turn this 90 degrees, it'll unlock. Of course, you gotta hold this steady. It'll unlock and you can lengthen and shorten it. But those are recognizable by the blue tips. There's gonna be four sets of these eave poles okay and the the top part of the eave pole don't know really what that's called this is an original piece okay you see that blue connector right there and go back along here it's got the same sort of twist lock connector but what i found when i unpacked it was that this pole had a push button connector and had been actually nicely fabricated this end with wood to keep it uh, um, to make it stronger. So that had it's pretty clever actually, but it wasn't original. So I knew it was going to run into some problems. It turns out even though there's a little bit of a bow in there that it it actually it works. And so someone had taken another tense pole and fabricated this third pole. We'll look at the instructions later, but it is not clear at all how many segments are used for the ridge pole and the uh, the eave the, the poles that span the two the eave poles on either side the four eave poles. So that's actually a clever solution, and it looks like the original cat would, or the original kit. It looks like the original kit would have had three sections to span each eave. Okay, looking at the bottom. Uh, here, the base of the tent, I fabricated these stakes. Okay, so we're a military family. We don't typically like to add weight. So buying some huge 
metal stakes was not something I wanted to do. And you know, that's all that's pallet wood that I just cut. I mean, yeah, it's not the strongest, but hey, it's what the army used for decades. So I went with the same thing. The front and back have four loops for stakes. Each and the sides each have two loops for stakes for a total of 8, 10, 12. Again, this is spanning about 10 feet. That ridge pole would be better at being 10 feet long. And here's just a carbon copy of that side. But you can take a look at the other side of the tent here. Let's go inside. So the inside of the tent, uh, I mean, it's a little bit stained. It's old. It's been packaged up for 53 years. But I'll tell you, I'm pretty happy with how this thing looks. All the, the three windows um, zip up, zip down. And there's a nice lamp. Or nice connectors for a lamp each of the doors there's a screens screens for the windows also but screens for the doors and each of the doors you can separately uh, tie open the screen there's these four loops well one two three three on each side so there's three loops that you can use the front and back and tie the entire thing open or you can tire a uh, tie open the screen individually or you can tie open the door flap individually and leave the screen zipped. So that's a little bit about the Coleman Vagabond tent. Again, I've had this tent for five or six years. Never opened it, never set it up. And finally, with the quarantine going on, I had the time, had a lot of time to do it. Nice floor, okay? So this uh, is not just a uh, plastic tarp floor this is this is a little bit more a little bit more rugged I don't know if you can really tell but it is uh, you know rubberized plasticized some something but you can see the you know that there is a cloth inside of there somewhere or at least stitches well it's pretty pretty good now this tent there are a few things I'm going to need to repair you know so little things like that that doesn't bother me at all and then of course maybe do some research and reseal these seams for the roof. I, this tent would, I'm, I, I don't think it would do very well in the rain as is because I've done nothing to weather uh, weatherproof it. So again, this is the Coleman Vagabond tent. And really, uh, like I said in the beginning, the reason that I wanted to go through this with you today is because I found it difficult to find any information at all on this vintage tent. If you happen to have one or happen to see one, I would say get it. Uh, it's value. It looks to be that uh, if, you know, one that you can set up uh, and is in decent condition, it's gonna, uh, you can you can get uh, several hundred dollars for them. But I think that if you buy it like I did where you don't really know the condition, it's a good risk. The poles could all be fabricated from wood. Although these nice twist lock these twist lock poles are pretty nice uh, but this is just an example of how you don't really need all the poles you could fabricate something in the good old-fashioned sort of army way with the wooden poles and wooden stakes actually works so thanks for joining me today i hope that this is helpful to any of you that have a coleman vagabond tent or want to get one it's a darn good tent and i'm happy i got it thanks for watching